Hey friends of Keyclock, nice to see you again. Have you ever wondered how to restrict certain users from authenticating to some client applications? And that's in a generic way. Well, I talked to Sven Tom Janos, who developed an appropriate um, Keyclock extension. And um, yeah, he will demonstrate how to do this. Make yourself comfortable and we're digging in. Today in my coding kitchen, I'm welcoming again Sven Torben Janus from Conciso. Um, Sven Torben, hi, how are you? Hi Nico, I'm fine. Thanks for having me here. Great. Sven Torben, uh, you're again guest in my uh, Keyclock studio and my, on my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, tell the people a little bit about you um, for those who didn't uh, watch uh, the former video. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, my name is Sven Torben Janus, and as Nico already mentioned, I'm uh, working with Conciso as a principal consultant, um, mainly in the architecture area, software architecture, and also identity and access management. I um, have quite a longer history with Keycloak already, so started um, implementing extensions for several customers and um, yeah, also having some open source extensions and as a company we're already uh, offering several consulting products around basically similar things Nico does but also like hosting solutions or um, yeah, doing second level support. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, you um, are offering and developing uh, quite a few um, interesting extensions and um, the last time we talked about some uh, home IDB discovery for everyone who's interested. Um, I put the link to the video description to the former video and also um, in the uh, upper right corner, I guess. So no, left, right. It's always <laughs> disgusting. Um, and there's a link to, to the video. And um, today we want to talk about um, what is called uh, client auth restriction. Uh, so that um, users are only able to authenticate for certain uh, clients, for certain client applications. Am I right, Thorsten? Uh, Sven Torben, sorry. <laughs> Sven Torben. <laughs> okay. Yeah, correct. So, okay, yeah, uh, stage is yours. Tell us about. Okay, thank you. So um, I think you all have seen um, different kinds of authenticator implementations. Nico introduced that in other videos already. So what we have here basically is an authenticator we can use uh, with this extension. So I already prepared a, yeah, a short flow here, which um, basically consists of one subflow here where we do general authentication, whatever we need, like the cookie thing, it's just username password here, but you can do step up or whatever you need. And um, then we have the extension that I provide, um, which basically can restrict yeah, authentication um, on certain clients. So um, I guess it's best I just show you how it works. Um, so let's take the account console for example. If I move to the account console um, with this flow, uh, I can just sign in. Let's say I have a test user here. I can simply sign in. That's it. So the user signed in, so far so good. Um, so what now if I want to restrict uh, this user so that it can't log into this um, account console any longer? So what I can do is um, in the default mode, basically, there's another mode, I get back to that later. But, um, I'm sorry, not the account, the account console. Um, so we can activate this feature by adding a client role here. So it's called restricted access by default. Um, it's configurable. You can change that name if you have to, if you want to. Um, but yeah, in, in the default it's called restricted access and I can simply activate this role. And just by adding this role to the client, um, this feature is enabled for this client. So with this configuration, no user would uh, be allowed to log in now because it's access is restricted. So if I go back to the account console and click sign in here, try to sign in again, I will say access denied. So that's basically it. So um, let me get back to the login here and just go to the user. 
I can now assign this role we just added to the client to this user to um, allow access again. So if I just filter this by client and take the account console here, I see this role and I can assign it to the user. That's just default key cloak um, role assignment. So, but if I now get back to um, the account console, click sign in again, this user will be allowed to sign in again. So basically that's the whole magic. Um, and you can now do this on a per client basis. So if I would log into another client, um, yeah, um, that would work, still work. So it's all based per client. Um, get back to the flow here and to the authenticator configuration. There are basically two, I guess. Yeah, two um, options we have, can configure here. First off, you configure the error message. So the one we saw where there's just said access denied. You can either write, I don't know, a whole sentence here or just have a property that is looked up and you also have then localization for free. And we have this thing, what it's called an access provider. By default, what we've just seen, it's based on the client role. Um, we support another operation mode here. Um, so I can switch this to policy-based mode, and I can just save this. And then we can use um, Keycloak policies for um, the whole thing. Let me open another client here, for example. I've prepared this one, where we can just use the author Keycloak's authorization feature. Uh, this works in a way that we have to add a, yeah, a resource here with the name Keycloak client resource. Um, and then we basically can reuse all policies here. For example, let me, if this one has a permission here, it's called access key clock client resource um, and has a policy attached. So and in this policy, we can now do whatever we'd like to. So it's checking for a role here again, but we can basically leverage whatever key clock offers. For example, we could, I don't know, um, go here. It's a full feature flag we can check on time or regex use or groups or whatever we need. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And then in the end, it works the same way as we've seen before. Um, these uh, policies and yeah, permissions get evaluated, and um, depending on the outcome, the user gets access or not. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So. Um, there were a lot of requests I saw online for some kind of features like that. And I've also seen some old JavaScript implementations similar to that. So I thought I basically make that as an extension and usable for everyone. Um, maybe I should also add a word of caution or warning here. Um, what I sometimes see is um, that people uh, implement it, for example, for the browser flow, but forget about to um, think about the other flows. So if we have, um, I don't know, like the direct grant flow, that's a common example. Um, for example, someone implements it at the browser flow, but not at the direct grant flow. And um, when you use that extension, please make sure you um, check all your uh, flows that you have in use because um, somebody could get, for example, a token where the direct grant flow, if that's not implemented in an accessor client with that token, um, just because you implemented it in the browser flow may not be enough. So just as a word of warning, Make sure you check all your flows when you're using this extension. Okay, great. Thank you, Sven Tom. That really looks interesting. Um, perhaps also a word of caution um, from my side. Um, the the latter option we saw with the with the policies, of course, only if, uh, works if your client is a, um, a confidential client, like. Yep. Um, it's now called uh, authentication is switched on um, with the public clients. This won't work as the public clients won't support um, authorization. And um, yeah, let me ask a critical question. Um, do you think that's basically a good idea to to put this check into Keycloak, that Keycloak um, manages access to an application or not. I'm always discussing this with my customers. If Keycloak should be the responsible uh, point in the infrastructure who manages access for users to, uh, to an um, application, or is this uh, in the responsibility of the application itself? I would say it should be in the uh, responsibility of the application. Um, Thanks. That's how Thank the you. protocol is designed. So, um, 
So I'm uh, maintaining this extension here. It's just basically I've seen so many people asking for it, so I just thought I, I build it. And this was one of my first open source, um, how to say, extensions. Yeah, so I thought maybe it would be a good idea. Um, I've seen a few customer where this basically helps with what I would say user experience more than from a security point of view. So you have a central place where you can just configure the error message, um, give it a concise, um, yeah, what to say point where a user can interact and understands what's happening. Now, from a security point of view, I would always say, okay, please put this kind of policy enforcement, if you want to call it that way, to the client or to the application. Um, because I, with the word of warning, I already said, so you tend to forget maybe a flow here or there, and then you already have a security issue potentially. So please, 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 if you can, do it at the application. So that would be my advice. Yeah. That's also my point of view. <laughs> put it to the application, yeah. and um, if you want to have it in Keycloak, put it also additionally also, to yeah. uh, to the application. Yeah. Um, to have it in Keycloak is uh, yeah kind of user convenience, yeah. a better better user experience. Yeah, great. Thank you, Sven Tom. Um, as always, I put all the links to uh, the repository and to Sven Tom to the video description to the show notes, and uh, so that you can. Um, Try it out, uh, download it um, to your, on yourself. Um, with this um, extension, you're offering also the the, the ready built binaries, I guess, yeah. um, so that the users don't have to uh, to build it themselves. You can yeah. download um, the ready compiled binaries depending on your um, keyclock version from the GitHub page. That's cool. Okay, um, yeah. If you have any questions to this um, extension, please go to the GitHub issues um, uh, page from the extension and Sven Holm is happy to help and to discuss some yeah, future improvements or future development. Sven Holm, thank you again and you, um, have a good time. Perhaps see you in the future sometime. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give me some thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if not already done so, so that you don't miss any of my other videos in the future. So long, hope to see you soon on this channel. Stay tuned. Bye bye.